I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. The voice I hear falling on my ears, the Son of God discloses. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Everybody, Lady Cheryl here, and I want to welcome you to my channel today. In this episode, I'm going to continue with my vlog style of making videos with less editing, and I'm going to share with you uh, what's going on in the food forest. Not a, a complete tour, just some of the things that um, that's interesting, and I just thought I would share. So I'm going to name this video, How to Get Large Onions along with how to make a makeshift trellis for my butternut squash. And let's see, how about this and that part too? This is my jujube tree. I told you guys a few days ago that this jujube tree will be loaded with pollinators. Bees and wasps are going from flower to flower, pollinating the jujubes. Yep. If you want pollinators in your yard, grow something to attract them. And by being so close to the elderberries, they'll start pollinating them in a few weeks after their flowers appear. These are pretty. I only put one seedling in this grow box with my pepper plants these are three grow boxes here peppers are growing very well as you can see and mary goes let's see i think i only put this is one plant yeah this is one marigold plant it's growing really really well these are so pretty well i think they're pretty <laughs> Okay, guys, I want to share with you my begonias. Now, you're probably saying, okay, they look pretty good, but this is the deal. They're over a year old. I winterized these in my greenhouse to just hold on and keep the roots alive. And they had some flowers on them, but not a whole lot. But look at them now. Once the conditions became favorable, meaning consistent weather, consistent temperatures, watering them just like I just have they just took off so this was the first year that I held my begonias over in the greenhouse I'm gonna do more in these baskets that way I can have beautiful pops of color amongst all this greenery I'm gonna do more Begonias, since I found out how easy they are to overwinter. Yeah, I'm gonna be adding some more hanging baskets to the food forest. Okay, guys, here is an update on my citrus trees. I am so proud of them. They are doing very well. You can't hardly see the end of the citrus trees because of those tomatoes, that sea of tomatoes over there is really getting overgrown but they're all doing well. I'll start with this one and I'll save the problem child for last. This is my grapefruit tree. It's one year old that since I've had it and you can see a lot of grapefruits on it. I'm not counting all these grapefruits because you know citrus trees will drop what they can't handle. Over here is my Lisbon lemon. There are a few lemons on here, not many but overall, the tree is very, very healthy. Back there is my Miho Satsuma, where my finger is. This is the only citrus tree that survived 
the 2020 Polar Freeze. I usually have a little fruit on it by now, but like I said, it's running a little bit behind because of the damage it uh, received during the Polar Freeze. Now, this is my newest Satsuma. And my subscribers helped me buy this one when they donated money when I lost a lot of trees. But look, guys, I think it's going to be a great year for this Arctic Freeze Satsuma. Now, like I said, I saved my problem child for last, and that is this new Meyer Lemon. You remember it had a lot of yellowing and curling of the leaves. Still has some curling of the leaves, but it's doing much better. It has fruit that it was able to hang on to. The lemons are getting pretty big. And remember, sometimes when you see yellowing of fruit, tree leaves, especially your citrus, don't automatically assume that it needs a high content uh, organic fertilizer of nitrogen. This tree needed iron. Now you can see the reason why I haven't trimmed this off right here and my nails are dirty, forgive me. I've been transplanting, but you can see more branches are shooting out. See real close there and here and here. So yeah, it's gonna be okay. It was a lemon heel, lemon here. So we can remove those. But um, I just want to show you the good and the bad. Still a little yellow, I just saw it. And curling leaves. Okay, I'll wait another month and I'll give it another serving of iron. Chelated iron. I'll insert a picture of what it looks like, the one that I've got. And those tomatoes are just awesome. I am going to um, provide a little bit more support for these tomatoes in this galvanized steel bed here. Here, I want to show you my Italian, what do you call that? People used to call them weeds. Those yellow, weeds. dandelion. It's going to seed. And I'm going to let it go to seed so that I can collect some of these seeds and give them to my subscribers. Because in my garden zone, 8A Mesquite, Texas, uh, this is a perennial and it comes back every year, but I'm going to plant some more because this Italian dandelion, which is called chicory, I use in my teas. It is Monday morning around eight o'clock and it's the day after Mother's Day and I'm checking on my elevated raised garden bed where I shared with you in the last video a few days ago that I planted my butternut squash. I have, at that time, put eight seeds in the container here, but I realized that germination rate might not be that great because of the fact that the seeds were frozen for five years. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it was eight seeds, and then I planted a few more, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how I plan to trellis them. Okay, so I go out to the greenhouse to get some twine, and I had my scissors and my pocket, so I harvested these jalapenos because I didn't want to tear them off like I did the other day. So I try to keep some scissors or pruners on me at all times when I'm walking out here in the food forest. So this is what I decided to do. Let me back up. As far as the trellis is concerned. So you can see, I don't know what that is, some type of spore. Yep, sure was. Here's some little dish soap and water with a little neem oil. I hope that takes care of it. You know, I was thinking, so I stopped what I was doing. I went in the house and I got these alcohol prep pads and opened them up and I decided that I better go in here and wipe off where I saw those spores because I was thinking about them. I remember seeing them before in the greenhouse. Um, right before I got some type of powdery mildew. 
So just in case, I decide to go ahead and wipe all of these off, kill any spores with that alcohol. Okay. I think I may have damaged the seedling when I was trying to pull that out. Uh, it's not hanging on real good. So I just went and got another couple seeds and I'm gonna replace them where I see they can go up the trellis. I'll put one right here. And the trellis would be strongest in the middle. So I'll go ahead and put another one right there. And then that'll be also succession planning. Because I won't need to freeze those seeds again. Uh, you know, since they already been frozen for a long time, I will be able to collect seeds from these plants, these uh, uh, seedlings that will produce fruit. And then I can save those. Okay, guys, so you can see how I secured them together. Just take a look at it there, here, as well as there. And then these two on this side. So this will make it real strong and the wind shouldn't uh, take it away. Because I like to try to use what I already have. I don't go out and buy uh, trellises or anything like that uh, when I'm planting something or growing something I haven't grown in a while. Because I used to grow the squash up on wooden uh, trellises that kind of V out. You know, and I remember buying them at uh, Lowe's, but it's been a long time since I had to use them and they dry rotted, so I threw them away. Yeah, let's move on to something else. I love how this butterfly closes up. Now, watch it, its wings are closed, and now as I get close to it or say something, watch it open them up. Yeah, isn't that pretty? I just like to share beautiful things with you. Okay, <laughs> I just wanted let you see something I have observed on this kefir pear tree. Look over here. I'll bring this branch down. These are aphids. I hope you can see them. Let's see if I can get them a light. Look how they have attacked that new leaf. Those aphids. At this point, there's no fruit on this branch. I'm just going to cut it off. I can drown the aphids. You see ants crawling all over them, sucking up that honeydew liquid they excrete. I'm not gonna waste my time. All the fruit is on the tree now. I'm just gonna pinch that off. Okay, do you see it? Thousands of aphids with a lot of ants crawling all around. There are over four thousand different varieties of aphids. They come in all colors and they are unisex, meaning they don't have to mate. They can multiply on their own and they multiply very, very fast. So in the case like this, this is not going to hurt my tree uh, if I take it off. So I'm just going to dispose of it, not in the compost. Okay. All right. Okay guys, I'm going to share with you how my strawberries are doing that I interplanted onions with to keep slugs and other insects from eating them. And they're doing really well. I have three grow boxes. Let me step back and try from this angle and show you the three grow boxes on this platform. I don't know why, but onions deter slugs. I think it's the smell. And you guys remember when I planted these onions in here so that, you know, I can get a crop of onions and strawberries at the same time. And I succession planted them. And what I'm doing now is what I do and it doesn't take any effort at all, is to remove the soil just by pressing down 
See that? That makes the bulbs get bigger. Now these are the onions I recently planted. These are the first set that I planted. And I'll insert in the video the name of the farm that I get them from. So if you want your onions to grow big bulbs, push the soil around it down. And I've been doing this. Every time I come out and I notice that I need to do it, I just push down. Let me show you how big those bulbs are. Okay, and look over here, huge. And remember, I pinched off the top of the onions when they started flowering like this because I'm not trying to save these seeds. And you can. You can let these get real dark and collect them and save them, but I have limited space and time. So I just put this, you know, anywhere I wanna deter bugs because it has that onion scent, or you could put them in a salad. I don't eat a lot of uh, raw onions because my system won't digest them well. Something that I inherited from my father uh, I don't know. I don't get the right enzymes to, uh, to digest and the onions. So here's a beautiful purple one. See that one right there, guys? Just take the soil and push it down. Push it down. And so remember, I told you guys in my videos, just a nice strawberry there. Uh, that I'm not going to be doing a lot of editing. What you see is what you get. And I hope that some of these tips that I will share with you in this format will help you. Okay, some nice onions. Here, this was the second set, I think. This onion over here. So I'm just walking around and you can see strawberries. Not a lot today because I harvested strawberries yesterday. Okay, so I'm pushing them down. Push that soil down and you can see that big, beautiful bulb. I don't know about you guys, but it seems like strawberries attract a lot of weeds, okay? So every few days, I just walk around. I don't have to bend down. All I have to do is just come in here and scoop and pick that weed out. Make it a better place. Thanks for place watching. Place Bye now. For you and for me and the entire human race, there are people dying. If you care enough for the living, make a better place for you. And for me.